confronted my cheating wife and it went horribly wrong. I am, male 34, and wife, female 30. Last week I discovered evidence that my wife slept with four different guys in the last two years. So I decided to confront her today about it and it went horribly wrong. She was blaming borderline personality disorder, BPD, for her affairs and when I said that is not a valid reason, she began to hit herself and tried to consume a whole bottle of pills. I was able to take away the medication and stop her from self-harming. I was able to call 911 and it took them half an hour to get to my house. Once the officer and the paramedics arrived, they got both sides of the story and took her to the nearest mental health facility. As she was going to the hospital she texted me a picture of a card that had the information of a family crisis center, and with the caption that the police officer believes that I am abusing her. Should I be worried? Edit, extra history. Not the first time she's self-harmed. Sister previously advised me that I should record every time she has an episode as we leave in a single consent state. I have multiple videos. Have called the police twice before because she had moments of rage and attacked me. Update, she's is being held for the week. I am getting my stuff and my son's stuff into my brother's place. I will be talking to a lawyer tomorrow and see what kind of options I have. Second update, wife was given the chance to call me. She told me what kind of plan the doctors have told her and she started talking about how the police office was, telling her that she should press charges because I look like a piece of shit guy. Basically that it wouldn't be hard to get me arrested. I sort of believe her because the cop didn't really ask many questions and was just mean mugging me. Should I make a complaint with the police department or completely dismiss it? Yesterday I found out my wife is having an affair. Yesterday I found out that my wife is having an affair. I calmly confronted her about my suspicions when she came home late last night. We've been together for 10 years, married less than one, but as I'm in my early 30s, the relationship and my partner have been a fundamental part of my life for what feels like forever. I was surprised when she confirmed that she was having an affair, and was convinced that I was just jealous of her spending time with friends without me. I have been frustrated with my inability to get details. It has been like pulling teeth when it comes to getting the specifics out of her. On one hand, I don't want to know. On the other, as painful as it is, I feel like I have to know. I'm mostly a Reddit lurker, but now that I've been confronted with my wife's affair, I feel incredibly alone, scared, and very uncertain. I have no support network, and my friends have fallen away with time and distance between us. With nowhere really to turn, I just wanted to get this off my chest and ask for advice. What do I do next, what is the right decision, and how do I make it or see it? I've cancelled travel plans with my wife, but she will travel regardless. I'll have almost two weeks to myself, and I intend to focus on myself. Exercise, relax, figure out what I enjoy doing for fun again, and perhaps most importantly, make an effort to reach out and make friends. I need some help through this, as a grown-ass bearded man crying at work is just unseemly in this day and age. A quick update for the interested and those that were kind enough to reach out. Lawyered up. Our prenups are solid. I obtained all the required financial information from my wife, and the attorney will be initiating the divorce this week. We've kept our assets separate, and we'll both leave with ours. It's a pain though that I have to wait 60 days after filing before the divorce can be processed and be official. The wife has covered the fees, I think this is fair. I didn't shit the bed, and I'm not stressing more than I have to over the process. We leave in an apartment, and we will be signing the lease in her name only tomorrow, basically buying me out. I don't feel like I have to move out, but I'm choosing to. I'm in a stronger financial position, and I intend to leave in a great place of my choosing, where I want, and on my own terms. This also gives me the chance to Marie Kondo my belongings, and hopefully will allow me to better focus on myself. I'm really planning on treating this as a fresh start. She still will be traveling. I didn't provide all the details, but she's going abroad to spend time with her family, and although I do feel like she should stay if she wants to work through this, that is not what I want to do. I'm okay with getting the time and space I need to recalibrate. The only hiccup is the cat. I got the cat, and love the shit out of it. The wife loves it too, and honestly, the cat loves her more than me. 
I don't even know what to do about the cat, but I have some time with the puss to figure it out. I don't hold animosity against the wife to the extent that I'm willing to disrupt the animal's life for the worse. Any cat whisperers, feel free to reach out. Once again, thank you everyone. Reading through the messages and the PMs has been therapeutic and beneficial. I'll probably still be reaching out for professional help at some point, but I've got my way forward for now. I've made my checklist of things to get done, and if there is one thing I love, it's checking boxes. Trying to get over wife's affair, but ready to give up. To make a very long story short, my wife had an affair last year. She didn't confess. I had suspicions of an emotional affair, and after two confrontations she finally trickle-truthed me. On a whim, and having read a lot about this sort of thing, I pressed. I found out way more than I wanted to. Lots of lies, nights at work that weren't really nights at work, etc. I immediately went apocalypse mode, filed for separation, and asked her to leave the house. That lasted for a couple days. I quickly realized what she was doing to herself, and when she got sick at her hotel, her mother wouldn't make the trip to pick her up. So I did. Took her to urgent care, and then I ended up letting her come back home. In the last year, we've spent a lot of time and effort working, and to her credit, she has come a long way. She went from being completely passive to engaged and communicative, and she pulls her weight around the house. I feel like I have a partner again. Unfortunately, something's missing. She fundamentally changed herself in my heart, and I don't know how to work around that. It's just different now. I think back to the desperate struggling I did with trying to fix things leading up to, during, and after the affair, and I think about the way she was handling it. She treated me with zero respect, lied to me, and was even going to let me make a huge career decision in order to try and fix a marriage she had already violated. There were times, as things got worse, that I wanted a way out and nearly left anyhow, but I was committed to the idea that things would get better. That I wouldn't be the one to give up. So now, after working weekly with a therapist for a few months, I think I know what I want to do. I want to leave. I also don't want to hurt her. I'm worried that maybe something will magically change once I've drawn that line, though, and suddenly I'll realize it was a mistake. I care for her, and it's frightening to think of the void after having this life partner for 8 years suddenly disappear. At 34, re-entering the dating pool is also intimidating as well. I'm at this sort of impasse and trying to overcome the inertia, but the cold reality is that I think I'm with her because I'm afraid to start over. Afraid that, ultimately, this is something most any marriage will have to deal with. Meanwhile, I feel like life is passing me by, and the life we're leading at home together seems hollow. Confronted my wife on New Year's morning. She confirmed, she was having an affair. I'm devastated. Well, what a wreck I am. I am hoping that I can find a future somewhere here. My wife and I have been married 11.5 years and together 13 plus. We have two kids, daughter 9 and son 7. I always felt that our marriage was different than all the ones around us that we saw failing. We are best friends, soulmates, until death do we part. I was wrong, my perception of things were different than hers apparently. I was aware that we had some things missing in our relationship, but I thought the other strengths outweighed the issues. I was wrong. I noticed some funny behavior over the last couple of months, but never put any of it together. I see now that I was in denial of the fact that this person that I trusted more than life itself could or would go outside our marriage. Both of us started getting healthier at the beginning of the year. Weight loss being the key, I have lost 115 pounds, her pounds. It was making our lives better. My attitude and outlook on life was getting more and more positive, our sex life and intimacy was improving, I had very low libido being as heavy as I was. I, in my mind had committed to 2019 being the best year of our lives. But the last 10 years seemed to have already taken a toll on my wife and she started looking outside our marriage. I noticed that she was going out with the girls more often, doing more after work activities like getting involved in her union. She was buying new clothes. I simply chalked it up to the weight loss and feeling better and wanting to go and have more fun, which I always encouraged, as I like to go out with the boys and work out of town occasionally. I never wanted her to feel like she was housebound with no social life. I noticed that her phone stopped showing her location on some of the nights that she was out, 
once again, never thought anything of it. In fact felt guilty for even thinking that she would be up to something. Finally, she told me last Friday in the afternoon that she was going to a girlfriend's to have some drinks and would probably crash at her house. I told her that it was a great idea, have fun and make sure that she crashed there rather than driving home. That night I checked her phone location, wanted to see which friend she was staying at without bothering her. Well, I noticed her location was off again. My heart sank. I switched from find my iPhone to find friends app. I had never used this app, didn't even think that we were signed up on it. Well we were, and it put her phone location at a hotel near the airport in our town. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. In the morning, I saw her location go through the drop-off loop at the airport. I still tried to give her the benefit of the doubt, and maybe her plans changed with the girls and they went out for drinks instead of staying in. Maybe one of her girlfriends needed a ride to the airport? Well, when she got home, I asked how her night was. Did they have fun? Did she crash at her friend's T's house or K's house? She said they drank and crashed at T's house, 50 miles from the airport. I asked if T or K were planning vacation this week, she said no, they were staying home. I wanted to blow my lid there and then. The kids were around, I decided to keep my mouth shut until that evening, as we had planned on being together that night. Instead, she fell asleep with our son, a regular occurrence, he likes to be cuddled to sleep. It made me mad. I could not get it out of my mind. I started snooping on everything, found a pair of panties that I had never seen in her purse, a bottle of KY in her bathroom bag, we've never used it. And then I grabbed her phone from the nightstand in my son's room while she slept. My soul was crushed. I found texts, explicit, and Snapchat conversations. She told him she loved him. I found cell phone calls on our bills going back to October 31st last year. Long one to three hour conversations, so many of them. I did not sleep a wink that night. In the morning, New Year's Eve, I waited until I could get in a part of the house without the kids and asked her who else knew about her new man. She was shocked, but told me only her friend Kay knew. She had kept the secret from other friends and family. She told me that he was a man that she had known through her union committees and that he was married also. She wouldn't tell me his name. I told her I was leaving for the day and was not sure when I would be back. I drove to my office, picked up a bottle of whiskey and proceeded to drink an entire bottle of Jack Daniels, from the bottle, while I watch my Buffalo Bills earn their way into the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. What a bittersweet day. I also was able to put enough pieces together from his social media names, not his real name, to figure out who he was, and who his wife was, and get his wife's cell phone number from a website that she was listed on. I immediately texted his wife. She was on vacation with him, my wife dropped him at the airport to meet her at their destination. She also confirmed that they had been unhappy for a while, but their vacation was to be a step in rebuilding their marriage. My wife sent me multiple texts while I was at my office. I turned off my location and blocked her from all social media. And never responded. This prompted her to contact her entire family and tell them what had happened, as she was unsure if I was going to contact them first. I didn't, I didn't talk to anyone. I was ashamed, embarrassed, emasculated. Why would I tell anyone? I waited until the morning, slept on the couch in my office, to make contact. I told her I was safe and if she wanted to talk, to get someone to watch the kids and come to my office. She was hesitant, but came. I asked her all the questions we all want to know when this happens. Most importantly, who she was going to leave, me or him. She said that she had cut him off and wanted to make things work with us. I hope that I can believe her. We are trying to be our best selves around the kids, including staying in the same bed. She told me that she needs to work on herself and might not stay in our bed. She has given me access to her phone. She said that there had been one five minutes phone call with the other man to confirm that they were done and both were going to try and make their own marriages work. This morning, I texted his wife again to see if what my wife was saying was true on their end. I have not received a reply from her. I haven't told my wife I texted her again, not sure if I should, but I want to be 100% transparent and honest. Since then, I have read many posts on here, and some other blog posts. I was pointed to the 180 which I have read a couple of times now. Man, 
I have acted the exact opposite of what the 180 tells us to do since D-Day. That's what brings me to this post and the questions that I have. First, I truly want to save our marriage, and she has told me the same, yet I don't believe a word she says. I am simply going on faith right now. She said that today she will find phone numbers for counselors slash therapists for us. Individual and then couples therapy. For those of you that have reconciled, did you implement the 180, did you do it right away? It seems so hard. The other thing that worries me about the 180, is that she knows me better than I know myself. It seems to me that she will see right through it, and still know exactly how I feel. I am bad at lying especially to her. I also worry that the 180 will push her away. So many emotions. Have others had positive experiences with therapy, individual and couples? I really want to hear from people who have survived this and kept their marriages together and more importantly, made their marriages better after this betrayal. So heartbroken right now. Small update. I heard back from the AP's wife. AP told her that things were done between him and my wife and he was going to work on their marriage. All contact has been cut off between AP and my wife. I know if they want to they'll be able to find a way, but at least the message has been clearly sent to both parties, if there's contact it's over. I have full access to her phone and account so this gives me some peace of mind. Still unsure on the 180. I'll have to study it some more. She's lying, buddy. If she wanted to work it out, she would have been the one to tell you. Not have you find out after he goes back to his wife. And the not sleeping in your bed thing is clearly that she likely thinks that being with you is cheating on him. The affair isn't over. It may have gone on pause while they're on vacation, but it isn't over. My advice. 1. Go and get an STD test today, and whatever you do, don't have sex with your wife. If he was cheating with your wife, he may have been cheating with others. And if your wife was cheating with this guy, there may have been others. 2. Call up a lawyer and start protecting yourself. 3. Stop talking to your wife about anything except your kid. She's in damage control here buddy trying to stall for time. P.S. Go Bills. I am so sorry you are going through this. D-Day for me trickled and stretched from the last week of July to mid-August, and then I didn't get full disclosure until the beginning of September, a week after we started counseling. Until the beginning of September, he didn't tell me anything I hadn't discovered on my own. He said he was willing to put in the time and effort to try to fix us. He has pretty much been a model wayward spouse since. I did not institute the 180. I was too caught up in ravenous hysterical bonding for a couple of months. And to be honest, I was afraid I'd lose him if I pushed him away. It was weakness on my part and when I am feeling doubtful and suspicious, I wonder if I made a mistake in not doing it. We are still going to counseling both together and alone. I still think about it all the time. I still worry. And I'm still here reading posts. I think we will make it. And we may even be stronger for it, but it will be my pain and suffering that paid for our success. Anyway, I wish you strength, comfort, security and happiness.